I want to be out there with you guys. You guys are all fellowshipping really good. I'd rather be out there with you guys than standing up here right now. But that's uh, part of my job is to stand up here. So hey guys, we're going to get started today. Um, as you can see, there's, things are going to look a little different today. We, we got uh, Lenny coming and leading us in worship. Uh, we've got uh, a guest speaker coming to deliver the message. Uh, I'm just up here being MC today, so um, uh, you guys don't have to listen to me today. That's two weeks in a row, so um, I, I think that because you guys haven't got to hear me speak for two weeks, I think you guys should go back and listen to some of my old messages just to make up for it, uh, and we'll, we'll do that. But anyway, Lenny, let's, uh, let's worship. Amen. Praise God. It's a joy to be back with you. Why don't we open with a classic hymn, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. Sunday, for those of you who may not have known that, which means next week is Easter Sunday. So we need to fill this place on Easter Sunday. So that means you guys need to go out and invite some friends to come. Strangers, you can invite strangers. Um, not real strange strangers, but uh, <laughs> people that you don't know, uh, whatever. Uh, bring them. Bring them. Uh, let's, let's pack this place out on Easter Sunday. Uh, we'll be starting a, a new series. Uh, on Easter, um, and uh, it's going to be a good one. So, not I'm not saying that just because I'm preaching it, but the material that's coming to me is is like really good. So, um, be ready for that. Also, uh, we don't have any slides for for this, but also uh, next Sunday morning being Easter, if you were really into getting up early, uh, don't forget there is a a, a um, sunrise service at Mount Gilead, uh, and you can go there, um, I think you can get breakfast there, you can walk up to the top of the mountain, or I think that if uh, 
you're not into that, you can get a, a tram ride um, up to the top of the mountain. Um, I haven't been in a few years, but um, it's an amazing experience to be up there uh, for sunrise service. So if you are feeling up to that, um, head up there and then come on back here uh, with all those friends that you're going to meet up there on the top of the hill. Bring them all with you <coughs> on, uh, next Sunday morning to, to our service. So uh, the only announcement we really have is those little cards that are in the seats uh, in back uh, in the back of the seats in front of you. Uh, if you uh, during the message um, you have a um, you have some sort of uh, decision that you feel like God is leading you to. You have a question about something. Uh, prayer request that, that you uh, want uh, to me know about, want me to know about, go ahead and write that all down. You can put it in the offering basket when it comes by at the end of the service, and those will come to me, and I'll be praying with them over them uh, this week. So that is for you guys um, to use uh, to, to give me information uh, that you might want me to have. So let me grab my Bible. I forgot it. Our opening passage today comes from Psalms 119. And we're going to be in uh, verses 57 through 64. The Lord is my portion. I have promised to keep your words. I sought your favor with all my heart. Be gracious to me according to your word. I considered my ways and turned my feet to your testimonies. I hastened and did not delay to keep your commandments. The cords of the wicked have encircled me, but I have not forgotten your law. At midnight I shall rise to give thanks to you because of your righteous ordinances. I am a companion of all those who fear you and of those who keep your precepts. The earth is full of your loving kindness, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. Let's pray. Well, Heavenly Father, we, we pray that as we begin our service here this morning, as we begin to I worship you with everything that we are, Lord. We ask that you take away all the distractions that might be in our minds, Lord, so that we can focus on you. As we worship you in song and as, as we worship you through the message today, Lord, we ask that you become real to us this morning, that we feel your presence in a way that we've never felt before. So, Lord, we open up ourselves, we open up our minds, and we open up our hearts to you this morning. And we pray this in your name. Amen. Uh, Bob, you want to come and do a uh, prayer request? Yep. And uh, the prayer request mic is over here. We are trying to do put it in a different spot every week just to confuse you guys. Uh, but for today, it's, it's over on that side. Good morning. This time I'll take prayer requests this morning. Um, I'm going to ask for prayer for my granddaughter, Kai Lynn. She's having some heart issues right now. She's only 15 years old and they're running tests to figure out what's wrong with her. Continue to lift up Stuart, who is at home recovering, but I see that he's not here today, so for his continued healing.
Any other requests this morning? I just wanted to um, pray for Diane Mar Maury. She's an old church member. Not old, old, but you know, old. She used to be here. And she's got really bad arthritis. Her, her shoulders are gone. And she's been in this place, Apple Valley, for how long? Like several years now. Ten. And ten, ten years? Yeah. yeah. And um, I just wanted to pray for her and let her know that we're thinking about her and, you know, let God touch her and let. God let her know that he's in her, healing her every day. Any others? All right, let's take these to the Lord. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning with grateful thanksgiving in our hearts that you are who you are, that you are God, and that you are the God that listens to our needs. You are ever caring and ever hearing, and so this morning we praise you, and we come before you with that in mind, and we lift up Vicky's granddaughter, Kylan, 15 months old who has an unknown health problem. We pray, Father, that the uh, medical uh, professionals will find out what's wrong with her and uh, bring healing to her, Heavenly Father. And we pray for her parents and her grandparents, Lord, as they go through this time of concern that you uh, quiet their hearts with your peace. And Sue lifts up Jen and Frank this morning to find a new place and that it would be in this area so that we will continue to have fellowship with them, Father. Susanna brings Stuart to mind this morning and to you for continued healing. We know that you have been giving him very good care there in the hospital. And uh, we just pray for him this morning that you will continue to strengthen him and give him recovery. And Anne lifts up Diane Mowry this morning. We uh, we thank you for her. She's still interested in this church and asks about it and um, likes it when we reach out to her. And we thank you for Anne's um, kind thoughts of her this morning, Lord. We pray that you will encourage her uh, as she spends quite a bit of her time in her room and in her bed. Uh, we just pray that you also protect her, Lord God, uh, where she is. And we thank you for her. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <coughs> All right. We're going to sing a song now that uh, ushers the King of Kings in. And uh, I always think of this song around Palm Sunday because I can picture the people lining the roads celebrating the King. So why don't we do that in the spirit right now as we sing this song each and of day.
so great and so much higher than our conceivable expectations, God. We thought you came to earth to uh, relieve us of our discomfort, of the difficulties we might have been facing. Uh, the men, the people that were under Roman rule, obviously were praying against that and praying that you would uh, uh, just deliver that, but you had a greater plan. You had a greater plan that would deliver us ultimately from death itself and deliver us into the kingdom of of the heavenlies, Lord, and before your Father. And uh, we are rejoicing in that today, Lord God. And we just want to declare that you are truly the King of kings and Lord of lords. And... Uh, we want to sing a song about that now called, this one goes back a few years. Called No Other Name. His name is exalted.
Jesus on the donkey, you know, as a, you know, he went through the streets. Everybody was yelling, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. And yeah. that means, save us, Lord. Yeah. Save us, save us. Mm-hmm. And I, I, you know, today is Palm Sunday, and this is what happened. And he's walking down the, with the donkey down the street, kind of probably not wanting to go this way, but he later goes to the garden and prays, Lord, if there's any way I can get out of this, you know, but of course it was his will, and thy will be done, thy will be done, and um, Palm Sunday is a very special day in the church, so Hosanna, save us, Lord, Yes. save us all, Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. All the your labor come unto me, for such is the kingdom of God. You have to come, receive it. The communion that we take uh, is more than just remembering. You're taking in Christ. When you ask Christ to come in, he comes into you. And his blood was shed on Calvary so you could be saved. That's a cleansing for our sins. Without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. That communion is very sacred, and it also we're to remember what he did for us, but it also tells us to examine ourselves, and so we always need to examine ourselves to make sure that we're walking where we're supposed to walk. Hallelujah. And I want to share that as we were singing that song, I just saw the heavens open up and saw the glory of the throne room with all the angels and saints and the people throughout the whole world singing and worshiping him, that worship goes on 24-7, yeah. you know, and we're in harmony and unity with heaven when we say that, holy, holy, holy. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Amen. All right, so we're going to uh, bring Jim up, and he's going to deliver our, our, uh, our message today. Some of you guys may uh, think that Jim looks familiar. It's because he has led worship here before. Um, but uh, I approached him and said, Hey, uh, I've got worship covered, but I don't have the pulpit covered. And uh, he was willing to, to come and, and do that. So uh, Jim is, is going to be, uh, unless more of you guys want to come up here and, uh, and do some preaching too. Uh, <laughs> you guys are doing pretty good from where you're sitting. But uh, so uh, I'm going to turn it over to Jim. Thank you, Pastor Dwayne. Are you sure you want to turn it over to me? I mean, you know me. <laughs> this can be dangerous right here. Um, good morning, guys. Thank you so much for letting me come uh, and enjoy morning worship with you guys. I felt the presence of God in each and every one of you. Um, I got goose pimples. The statements that were made, the songs that were sung, the heart was in all of it, and I feel that God received it. Um, worship is something that I stumbled into. Didn't want to. Uh, it was something that I stumbled into. Uh, I could use the word forced, but I don't want to use that word. Um, when I first came to the Lord, probably 30, a little bit, 30 years ago, uh, I was a younger, much younger guy. Um, we started to attend a church for the simple reason is for our children to have something to do. We had four. We needed Sunday (laughs) just to be able to rest and relax. Um, Little did I know that God was tapping me on the shoulder and saying, I will work with your children, but first, let me work with you. Out of that came, they passed around uh, the notes, board, hey, new people, sign your name, Hey, what do you do? What do you like to do? What are your hobbies? And I made the, uh, at the time, I thought, mistake of putting down that I play guitar. Um, What I didn't put in there is that I know three chords. C, D, and G. That was it. Um, And even those I didn't know all that well. Uh, A couple weekends later, a gentleman by the name of Andre came up to me and he said, I see that you you play guitar. And I said, well, yeah, kind of sort of. He said, let me invite you to come on Thursday night and practice with the worship team. No. (laughs) Didn't want to do that. Um, So God 
evidently picked me up and brought me on that Thursday night where I sat my guitar down. And I watched these incredible musicians, incredible singers, and I'm shaking like a leaf. It's just the like scariest thing you could imagine. Um, I started to pack up my guitar and I walked out to my car. Andre, who later became a very dear friend of mine, come running after me and he said, where are you going? I said, I can't play with you guys. You guys are professional. I have no idea what I'm doing. I know three chords, that's it. Um, he said, no, you don't understand. He said, God has told me that you're gonna be a worship leader and that it's my job to mentor you. And I'm like, wow, God has a sense of humor. That's pretty much what it is. So that was my, my introduction into worship. 30 some years later, uh, I still do it from time to time, but in a public setting. The one thing that we're gonna learn this morning is we don't just worship on Monday or Sunday. We worship Monday through Saturday. It's an all week praise and worship for God. You know, uh, I heard the other day, when I first came to the church and everybody was doing this, I felt really uncomfortable. <laughs> You know, is that okay? <laughs> what happened? Um, this guy that I was watching uh, a video of, I don't know if you know the, the name of Tim Hawkins. He's a comedian, Christian comedian. And he said that there are names for the types of worship that we do. I'm going to step away from the mic. He said that the first one is called holding the television. And he said, then you break from there and holding the big screen. <laughs> you know, um, and he's right. I, it, it felt like the most uncomfortable, unnatural thing because my mind was all around the room and people were looking at me. And that's not true. You know, the only person that we need to worry about in a room is God, is our relationship with him. So this morning, uh, we're going to talk in some detail about that. Vicki, I apologize. I am known as the king of jumping all over the place. Okay. So <laughs> if that happens, you have my apologies. So it's important to know that worship is not just something that we do at the beginning of church. No. It is so vitally important to remember that worship is showing God our face, our adoration, because he made us to do just that. We were made to worship him. I remember thinking when I first became a believer at what God must hear on Sunday mornings. Around the world, songs are being lifted up and sung. And, and let's be honest, I, I've sat in pews. I've sat with a choir. And not all of us know how to sing. You know, so I'm wondering, God, what are you hearing up there? How, is that, how does that sound? And there's just a peace. Because God felt, I felt God tell me that that doesn't matter. It's not... It's not your voice, it's your heart. That you're delivering that worship to him. Nobody else in the room. I don't worship anybody else but him. So I, it's, it's, it's an amazing, amazing thing to learn how to worship. So let me pause. Let me tell you that not everyone comes to worship. Do all of you come ready? I think some of you do. Almost all of you do because this is a worshiping church. I've been here a few times, and I know how you guys do it here. That's a good thing. Some come late just so they don't have to hear the worship music. Drums too loud, guitar's too loud, singer does sings off tune, you know. Um, it, and it's true, but friends, please believe me that they are missing out on the opportunity. They're missing out on the opportunity to feel God prepare them to hear his word. And that's what, exactly what worship is. We are entering the courts of God. Lifting our voices up. Singing these songs of adoration and love. <laughs> I get really emotional when I talk about worship because I know how much it means <clears throat> to me. So hopefully, if I need tissue, will you help me? So, <laughs> so know that God works through worship. That's the most important thing. There was a church in Orangeville, California, my wife and I went to for just a brief period of time. And these people excelled at worship. Um, outside the building, half hour, 45 minutes before church started, they were up, out there drinking coffee, doing the first part of worship, that first gate 
of worship. And that's what you guys did this morning. You're talking to each other. You're loving on each other. You're talking about God. You're talking about what God did for you this week. The emotional, wonderful things that happened during the course of the week. That's the first gate into worship. That's the first gate into the throne of God. These people stood outside, <clears throat> talked. Some were singing in corners, you know, three and four people at a time. And you could hear inside the building, the worship team start to enter into music. These people, with hands raised, walked through the doors with hands raised. They were ready. <laughs> you know, they were ready to experience everything that God had to give them that morning. They excelled at that. And it, it's an amazing thing. If you're not prepared, if you're not ready to receive God's word, we're going to talk about what you can do to make that kind of happen a little bit more. So the importance of worship is huge. Worship matters. It matters to God. It matters to us. And often we allow personal distractions to kind of get in the way. Sometimes we go to church, but we don't worship. We sing songs, but we don't worship. We listen to sermons, but we don't worship. We serve in a ministry area, but we don't worship. All of these things are elements of worship, but they are not worship in and of themselves, which means that you can do all of them and yet have failed to truly worship God. Worship is a lifestyle. It's not just something that we do for 20, 25 minutes on a Sunday morning. It is a lifestyle. It's our ticket to get in the throne of God. Praise is the expression we give to the worship we live. Worship involves more than we realize. And I'm going to go over six reasons um, for the importance of worship. I found some great... If you don't want to listen to me, I, I found some great things that you can read while I'm going through this. Um, worship is a full expression of how you respond to God. All that he is and all that he has done for you throughout your entire life. That is why true worship requires all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind, all of your strength to appreciate the reality that God desires you to know him and be with him forever. That's pretty heavy. <laughs> you know, that's a pretty big expectation. Let me read that again. Worship is the full expression of how you respond to God. All that he is and all that he has done for you throughout your entire life. That is why true worship requires all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength to appreciate the reality that God desires you to know him and to be with him forever. So worship is based on the intricate threads of faith, reverence, and relationship. Let me turn to the next page. So let's talk about that. Faith. Faith, worship emerges from the bedrock of faith, a belief in something greater than ourselves. It's a conviction that there exists a divine presence, a cosmic orchestrator. Faith fuels our prayers, songs, and acts of devotion. Now, in reverence, worship is rooted in awe and wonder. It's deeply rooted in that. Um, it's the hushed reverence before a star-studded sky, the silent acknowledgement of his mystery. Reverence bows before the sacred, recognizing the finite in the presence of of the infinite. And the relationship part of it is worship is not a monologue. Worship is a dialogue. That's us talking to him. It's individual, one-on-one, -on -one, every single person in here. That's exactly what it is for. So in essence, the relationship with God, the unseen listener, shapes our worship. So. Worship is the heart's melody sung in faith, whispered in reverence, and woven into the fabric of existence. Romans 12.1 says, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. 
This is your true and proper worship. Who's got goosebumps? I do. Sorry. <laughs> um, the next slide is going to talk about being ready spiritually. So we must be spiritually ready to hear God's word and to act on it. This is important. It's vital. As many have said before, don't, we don't enter into a corporate worship and just begin to worship. We come into the space already worshiping, just like that church in Orangeville, California. They came in worshiping. They weren't waiting for it to start. They were leading it. So the first step is simply to recognize and confess that fact, praying to the Holy Spirit would increasingly narrow the gap between the worship offered on Sundays and the worship offered Mondays through Saturdays. The worshiper who grows in orienting their heart towards God Monday through Saturday, whole life worship, will find themselves more calibrated to worship on Sundays. So it's not just something that you walk in the door and, hey, I've led my life for the last six days, now I'm going to come in and, and, and worship God. That's important, but it's the other days of the week. Are you calibrating yourself? Are you setting yourself up? Are you in constant dialogue between you and God? That's important. It gets you ready. I, I love worship simply because it puts us in a position to be able to enter the throne and to fully hear and understand his word. Pastor Dwayne is doing an amazing job. Worship team. I know Randy and Faye for 20 plus years. They do an amazing job. Make sure you're calibrated when you walk in that door. Make sure that you're ready. Ready to just get what God is ready to give you. It's important to us. So, <clears throat> the first step is to simply recognize and confess the fact praying that the Holy Spirit would increasingly narrow the gap between the worship offered on Sunday all the way Monday through Sunday. So center your heart before worship. Align yourself. Before a worship service, all of us can do things that can make entrance into the worship easier. We can meditate on a verse or two in Scripture. We can pray through a psalm. We can listen to music that stirs and orients our hearts. Perhaps just ten minutes of quiet is what we need. Certainly turning our phone to do not disturb and actually turn it off. All the distractions from this, this world makes it so difficult for us to be in the right place for God so that he can use us and teach us and mentor us. It's all of those distractions. Certainly turning our phone off is, is, is important. Being around a group of like-minded believers is important. So... Just calm our afraid, distracted minds. It's so hard to do, isn't it? you got so many things going on during the course of the week. It's so hard to just turn that off when you come in the door on Sunday. So I ask that you don't just turn it off on Sunday. I ask that you worship him Monday through Saturday and come in ready to receive. You arrive early. A few things make it harder to fully engage in worship than arriving just on time or late. Arriving early gives us plenty of time to place, find a place to sit and then center our hearts through the word and prayer. We also have a chance to prepare for worship by greeting others. Some people think the only way to prepare for worship is quietly praying and ignoring everyone else. That is a one-dimensional way to worship because worship isn't just song. Worship is everything that we do every relationship that we have. Because worship is both vertical, us to God, and horizontal, one another, greeting the people in worship next to you is a wonderful way to calibrate your heart for corporate worship. Make the first of the moments. Jump in the deep end. Let a call to worship and opening of hymns or songs flood your mind and flood your heart. Sing loudly, even if you don't know how to. He's the only one that's listening. Well, almost. Um, sing loudly, breathe deeply, feel passionately. Sometimes participating physically actually leads 
our affections to engage spiritually. Recognize that opening of worship is meant for our calibration and let it prepare your heart to worship. So the calibration is a metaphysical sense. Worship can indeed serve as a form of calibration. Just as we calibrate instruments to ensure accuracy. I tune my guitar, which goes out of tune frequently. Um, thank you, Colleen, for getting my guitar fixed. My guitar is fixed, yes. <laughs> so ready to do that again. Um, so we, we, we calibrate ourselves to ensure accuracy. Worship can help align in, in inner compass values and intentions. It's a way to recalibrate our focus and our balance. One of my favorite songs in worship is uh, Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord. I just love that song. It's simple. It's written simply. The guitar chords are simple, but it's so deep, you know? First time I heard that, I'm like, I have eyes in my heart? What does that mean? Um, <laughs> and it's okay, but that's exactly the meaning of that song. So worship involves most importantly, getting out of the way. Is worship only music? No. True worship is based on the desire to honor God. It requires a physical, personal relationship of God as found in scriptures. Worship is not based on my likes or dislikes. Can I say that again? I've been parts of churches where a man would stand in the back with his arms folded tight. How can you receive God with your arms folded tight? How can you do that? Well, I don't like the song. I don't like the band. I don't like the pastor. Why are you here? Because I fully, fully endorse that if you're not liking what you're hearing, go find a place where God can use you. Please, do that. I don't want all of your people to leave because this is a wonderful church. <laughs> but, um, but to be stagnant in church, to be stagnant in worship, you're not doing the Lord any good. Nothing. He's working on you, but you're too busy concentrating on, oh, they're, doing a, they're going to do this song again? They just did it last week. Why don't they let John sing this song instead of Jim? You know, it... it Believe me, the stuff goes on. Uh, the worship team and I at Randy and Faith Church, we would gather, well, of course, to practice on Sunday morning, uh, we would gather for 15 minutes in the back room. We would do everything that we could to make, you, make each other laugh. And the reason for that is because we had some really funny people in that band. Um, but we would walk on stage laughing, ready, open, and that's what the people would see. Holy cow. They're coming out here to sing, and they're laughing. You know, it's a form of a relationship with God. It shows that we're ready. So they were phenomenal people. God has always, for reasons that I cannot understand, he has always placed me in the middle of the most fantastic musicians. Amazing. I was in a uh, short-lived uh, band. Uh, everyone's from Ukraine. We were called the Tabernacle of Praise. I was invited in to sing because I was the only one that knew English. <laughs> These people were amazing. Their love of God was so passionate. They would walk around. <laughs> we, we went to a church in Alpine, California, where an old pastor, a friend of mine, was now spending his retirement years. His name was Pastor Bob. Love him. He came downstairs. We had all gathered in a small room downstairs. And we were worshiping, and they're broadcasting. They're just shouting in Russian, in Ukrainian, the, the love of God. They're moving. It, it just Even I stepped back and went, wow. Pastor Bob came down the steps, and he said, what are they doing? I said, they're worshiping God. He said, oh. He went back upstairs. So it doesn't mean that you have to be able to understand Everything I've gone to Ukrainian churches and haven't understood a word in the worship or in the message, but I felt God. It's amazing. It's amazing. So, in getting out of our own way, I told you I kind of 
go from time to time. So there you go. That's the first one. So worship is a call to action. Worship is zealous. Celebrate, celebrated and joyful. We must learn to remove our worries, our questions, ourselves. Get out of the way so we can worship with an appropriate honor. It's letting go. Sometimes we get in the way of our own experience in genuine worship. I have seen many people choose to judge their pastor, to judge their worship leader, to judge the song styles. It saddens me. When I see this, I remember, oh, we just talked about this, the man who non-verbally showed his distaste for what was happening in the service. It's not about what's happening in the service. It's about God. Open your minds. Clear it out. Be ready. You know, I'll sit with hymns. I'll sit with, um, I came in, like I said, 30 years ago. It was kind of like the beginning of that contemporary phase. So my brother gave me an album before I really came to the Lord. He's been a worship leader for, I don't know, 100 years. Um, he's just a little older than me. Um, he's phenomenal. He gave me this album by a band called Jars of Clay. Have you ever heard of them? I listened to this first album of theirs, and I'm like, I can worship God listening to this? Fantastic. That's what I wanted to do, you know? Um, I hope you all are as excited about worship as I am. We get in the way. Our own experience, our genuine worship, it, they judge us. They judge the pastor. I, I've seen it one too many times, and it can bring a church down. I pray, and I feel that it's being done in this place, is support your pastor. Support the worship team. Lift them up, because they have a tough they really do. You know, I've got to make everybody happy, but the only person that we really need to make happy is this man upstairs. Right? So, um, I'm getting ready to close out here, so I've only got another 12 pages left. Um, from what I understand, uh, Pastor, you said that there was going to be a lunch break around 12.45. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding, of course. Um, you can accept the richness and love that God has to give with your arms folded. In essence, you're closing the door between you and what God has to give to show you. I ask that we pray for people to get out of their own way when they come to church. Church, worship is where we fill our spiritual batteries. I used to preach this all the time. You come to a worship service, how do you feel when it's done? You're pumped. You're ready. God is just amazing. That's filling my batteries. So that when I go out on Sunday afternoon, Monday through Friday, Saturday, I am able to use that battery reserve to talk to people. And it doesn't mean that you beat them over the head with the Bible. It means that you're kind. It means that you take notice. That's a form of worship. To those people, you may be the only contact that day for them and to, to see their heart, to see for them to see your heart and your kindness is, is thrilling, you know? I used to tell the worship team before we went on stage is that right now we're getting ready to go out and be farmers. We're gonna go out and spread the seed of worship. God is gonna water that. He's gonna rain down on the seeds. We might never see these seeds come to bloom, but one day, when we're there, I fully expect to see that. You know, it, people come to church. I did come to church and don't really, don't really want to be there. You know, don't kind of look around and criticizing people. The hardest thing that I do now is I go to a church, and for the first two songs, I'm looking at their equipment and the soundboard, <laughs> how everything sounds, and then God goes, come back to me. You, you're here to worship me. That, those days are gone. So um, We do. We fill our spiritual batteries. May the eyes of our hearts be opened to the divine light. Here's a good one. 
worship is an act of war. Do you believe that? Amen. Yep. Um, I had a girl that sang with, with us once. Her name was Denise. And instead of the word worship, she used warship. And I'm like, warship? It's not a battleship. I mean, what are we doing? But really, later on, that kind of made sense. We were going to battle. Worship, worship is an act of war against the enemy of our hearts. It is one of the most important things human beings can do. Worship is not about feeling God's ego or feeding his ego, as some might mistakenly think. Instead, it's about aligning our hearts, there's that word again, with his truth, his love, and his purpose. When we worship, we acknowledge God's sovereignty, his goodness, his power. It reminds us of the dependence on him and our need for his guidance. Worship aligns us with God's perspective. It shifts our focus from our own desires, fears, and insecurities to his eternal truth. As we worship, we declare that God is greater than any enemy we face. He protects us. Whether internal struggles, external insecurities, doesn't matter. When a community worships together, it becomes a powerful force. United hearts in worship create a spiritual stronghold against the enemy. Worship fosters unity, encourages one another, and strengthens our resolve to stand firm. Your worship this morning, sir, was wonderful. Thank you for standing in that gap and bringing these people closer to God. Music choice was great. The sound was amazing. You know what? But I felt all of the hearts in here just going in that right direction. Like I said at the beginning, I felt the spirit of God all over this place. It's got to feel good. <laughs> so, remember, worship is not just a ritual. It's a battle cry. It's a way to weld love, truth, and faith against the darkness. So let your heart sing, and may your worship be seen. May your worship be a beacon of light in the midst of life's challenges. That's, that's great. So, the next one is, we must never rest until everything inside of us worships God. You believe that? Everything inside of us worships God. We walked. We walk. And we exude his presence. Indeed, the pursuit of wholehearted worship is a noble endeavor when every fiber of our being resonates with reverence for the divine. We find alignment, purpose, and fulfillment. Let our hearts be perpetual altars offering adoration and surrender. So in closing, see, I didn't, we didn't even need to order lunch. It was good. Um, so in closing, I want to look at Psalms 100. It's a psalm for giving grateful praise. Shout for the Lord, but shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful song. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pastor. Pastor? <laughs> pastor. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Yes, enter the gates with thanksgiving and the courts with praise. Give him thanks and praise his name, for the God is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Father God, thank you so much for this morning. I thank you for getting me through the last week and a half where you know, I felt the devil kind of challenge me on this um, through all kinds of adversities over the last week and a half. And, and you knew that. And, and you had me wait until 12.30 last night to sit and write this message. I tried so many times, like five times, and I threw them all away. For God, you knew exactly where we should go this morning. So, Father, I pray for this church. I pray for the wonderful people who are here. Guide them. Allow them to 
show your light. Be a beacon. Show your light to the rest of the world for the, the love of God. Father God, I pray for this in your name and in the name of your wonderful son, Jesus. Amen. If God spoke to any of you um, through through Jim's message, and you want uh, wants to to be somebody to pray with you, I'm going to be standing up here. We're going to invite Lenny back to lead us in our final song, and I'll be standing up here. And you feel free to come on up and and talk, and and uh, we can pray together. Um, but if God is speaking to you, and He wants is leading you to make a decision, don't put it off. Don't walk out the door. Um, without responding uh, to him. So whatever God's put on your heart today, respond as, as he leads. Um, and so, Lenny, why don't you lead us today? It's a song we should all know. Let's all stand and celebrate as we worship God in this song. your name set aside to continue our worship by uh, taking up our tithes and, and offering. So if, if you were, you, you felt like God's leading you to a decision, but you were, your legs just wouldn't work long enough to come up here um, to, to talk to me, you can write that down. You can put them in the, uh, in the basket there as, as it comes around. So uh, let me pray for this and then we'll ask Frank if you'll come and uh, take up the offering. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for what you've done. We thank you so much for the message that we received today. We thank you for the worship that, that we've been led through this morning, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, that you have given us a day of being able to spend in your presence. So, Lord, I pray that we take what our charged up batteries, our charged up spiritual batteries, Lord, and we use it through the whole week. That we worship you, Lord not just in this building, but outside of this building every single day until we can come back again on Sunday. Amen. We thank you, Lord, and we ask that you, as you use this offering, Lord, to glorify you. And we pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Hey, I just want to share a testimony really fast. Okay. 
just because um, you see me go up there every week that I'm able to get prayer. And I, I walked up and told them <laughs> that why do I want to miss this opportunity? God has probably answered almost every prayer I prayed when pastor up there. And two weeks ago, we prayed that I we could meet our grandson that we hadn't met yet. Uh, we have an ex-daughter-in-law that didn't want anything to do with us, eight months old, and um, we haven't hardly seen his four-year-old brother, almost four-year-old. And since then, we got to have a visit with them. Yeah. You know, yeah. God hears our prayers. Yeah. And yeah. That's a gift. Yeah. I just want to encourage people to go forward and get prayer. It's a gift. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Frank? you guys this is a pretty awkward time for me uh, when the offering is being taken up because I don't know where to look I don't want to look up out at you guys and like you guys feel like well I'm checking out see who's putting something in the offering plate and who's not so I'm kind of look, trying to look every other way but uh, out there um, so I didn't look at you so it's, it's okay uh, let's our uh, benediction today uh, is comes from 2 Corinthians 13, 11 through 14. Let's go ahead and read that together. Dear brothers and sisters, I close my letter with these last words. Be joyful, grow to maturity, encourage each other, live in harmony and peace. Then the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet each other with a sacred kiss. All of God's people here send you their greetings. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Don't forget to bring people next week. All right, guys. We'll see you next week.